Hi, and welcome to Pulled House Workshop video series. This is the second detailed video in the sharpening video set. I've chosen to dedicate this video to oil stones. Oil stones, like their water stone counterparts, date back thousands of years. Early Roman soldiers may have used wet stones in the form of uh, personal hone slates to sharpen their blades. They had bladesmiths, which uh, tended to some of the more severe issues, which used grinding wheels and larger hone slates, possibly lubricated with olive oil or fish oil. Uh, woodworkers and stonemasons of the time period did much the same thing. As we move forward through the chronology of sharpening stones, um, specifically uh, tailored to woodworkers and, and stonemasons who work with metal tools, uh, we find that Turkish oil stones, which were then mined in Asia Minor, uh, which is today the, the Middle East or parts of Turkey, um, were used heavily in England um, and many of the surrounding European countries, although a lot of local areas mined their own stones. Um, you find things like uh, Norwegian um, ragstone um, and, and many products named for their local area. Uh, most popularly known was probably the Charnwood Forest, which produced Charnley Forest Stones. Um, the Charnwood Forest is located in, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but uh, uh, Leicestershire? I'll give it a shot, England. Uh, it's like central England, uh, central Great Britain. And uh, it's still in use today, so they still are able to pull some stones out of there even today. The uh, a lot of those stones really overshadowed anything coming out of America until the late 1890s. Um, however, the, the first mention of American sharpening stones were by uh, Mr. Thomas Morton, who was one of the first English settlers uh, in America. His comments were pretty poor. Um, he didn't favor any of the American stones he found, uh, although they landed uh, a little farther north on the eastern coast uh, with his settlement group. Um, but, but as time continued on, um, we see some of the first quarrying of the Washita stones in the uh, what's now the uh, Ozarks, uh, the Washita mountain range near the Washita River uh, in Arkansas. In 1815, uh, some of the first mining was performed there. Uh, many of the, the original stones that were pulled out of there were considered of, uh, of a lesser quality, probably because they hadn't found... Um, some of the larger veins of the, the quarried rock. Uh, initially only 400 pounds were mined in the year 1815. Um, as we move a little further forward, uh, America began to see its Industrial Revolution beginning in, uh, from 1820 to 1870, which was interrupted by the Civil War in 1861 through 1865. Uh, a lot of this forced America into uh, an industrial age where things like sharpening stones were necessary to maintain not only uh, working tools for the craftsmen but to ever, ever more popular uh, to sharpen and shape industrial tools for large-scale manufacturing. Um, so as we begin this industrial revolution around 1820, um, shortly right around that time, 1821, uh, some stones were discovered in New Hampshire uh, which would later be known as India Pond Scythe Stone. Uh, or India Pond Stones, and they were uh, eventually owned by Pike Manufacturing, which was founded in 1823. And Pike Manufacturing continued to grow through the Industrial Revolution. We see uh, a lot of this Industrial Revolution forcing production of these stones to a large scale. Arkansas stones um, began to be produced in a much more uniform, almost manufactured way. Uh, they were able to be sorted and qualified based on their hardness and type and they were soon known all over the world as some of the best sharpening stones, uh, sharp oil stones uh, anywhere. So Arkansas stones typically come in, uh, in two types, there's hard and soft. Um, the hard are almost all pure silica which is a hexagonal crystal um, which is much harder than steel and in the Arkansas stones a lot of those embedded um, cutting media, that, that silica, <clears throat> are uh, very jagged and, and some of the harder stones are a little closer together or smaller and they're fine grained, whereas in some of the softer stone, um, 
they're not quite as fine grained, but they do cut much faster. There's also lily white Washita stones, uh, which is almost all silica, well, um, but they are a little more porous, and today they're extremely rare. Uh, they're excellent, excellent stones, but they're very hard to get a hold of, uh, partly because a lot of them have been mined out, and, um, and many places aren't even carrying them anymore. Um, along with some of this large-scale production, saw a need for some synthetics as uh, quality control became difficult with natural stones. Even today, natural versus synthetic, a synthetic stone can be carried to the nth degree for quality assurance. Uh, you know, they can take raw materials and make sure that they're, you know, as close to perfect as they can possibly purchase before they're made into the stone, which the entire process can be mechanized today. Uh, and and monitor very closely, whereas a natural stone is a product you're getting out of the ground, which may not always be 100% perfect. Uh, some of the natural stones have inclusions or organic material, soft spots, those sort of things in the stone. So even for a nice high priced, nice quality stone, which may last you, you know, two or three lifetimes, um, you may end up getting to a spot on that stone that you know is, is soft. So. You know, if you choose to go natural stone route, it's good to know your tools, uh, to, to know your stones. The uh, India oil stones were some of the uh, some of the first manufactured synthetic stones. They uh, contain aluminum oxide or corundum, which was originally imported from India, which gave the stone its name. Uh, these are white or red, depending on the uh, type of uh, impurities in the aluminum oxide. They were some of the first on the market in 1897 and were a partnership by Norton Abrasives and Pike Manufacturing Company. Uh, around the same time, um, something called car uh, carborundum was being developed. Sorry, that's tricky. It's close to corundum, but it's not the same. Carborundum was a trademark name um, that was developed. <coughs> um, it's basically a silica carbide. Um, material that was originally developed as an abrasive, but not until later 1890s was it developed into something we know today as a stone. Uh, it's created by bonding those silica carbide uh, powdered material into uh, a block by process of sintering. Um, today this has a ton of applications. You see it in everything from regular sharpening stones to brake pads. <clears throat> um, Crystallon was Norton's answer to carborundum, uh, carborundum rather. It's uh, basically the same kind of concept. Today there are several stones that we should probably know about as woodworkers. Um, there's the carborundum or crystalline, which is the silicon carbide. There are India stones, um, which are aluminum oxide or corundum, which are, are also obviously synthetic stones. Um, then there's the Arkansas, which are natural stones. Um, there's some Turkish stones and uh, Devonshire stones. There's a lot of natural stones out there too, um, but the, the basis that we look for is, uh, is the Arkansas, typically in America. Uh, and the Arkansas is a soft and a hard and a hard translucent. Um, the soft would be for a more general use type stone, and as we get into the hard, or hard translucent, you get into uh, like a pink translucent or a, an opaque white translucent and into the surgical black. So more and more uh, fine grit, uh, slower and slower cutting, and a keener edge you can put on your tool. Um, <clears throat> these are, the, the stones we're going to be talking about today are flat, but with the advent of so many synthetic stones, They've got a myriad of shapes now, uh, so you can sharpen everything from uh, carving gouges uh, to to oddly shaped parts for machining. Um, so they've got you know curved and wavy shapes, uh, triangles, just about anything you can imagine is out there for sale. Uh, I know on the Norton Abrasive site they've got an entire catalog of just sharpening stones. Um, so that's a, a little bit of the history behind where some of these sharpening stones came from, both uh, where the naturals had begun to be mined and, and used on a massive scale, and then the need for a synthetic, which was then developed 
uh, and is a lot of the synthetic stones we see today. When purchasing some stones, um, there's a lot of ways to find oil stones, or really good oil stones. Um, some of the cheaper synthetics you'll see at like big box hardware stores, um, those are a little tougher to begin woodworking with as they're, uh, they don't wear as evenly, the bonding material, the bonding process may not be performed to an exacting standard. So those can be a little frustrating if you're just starting woodworking uh, and just starting to use those stones. So I would recommend, it's a stone that's probably going to last you, you know, your entire lifetime. So spend a little extra money and get some nicer stones. Um, arrange through the grits, you know, if you, if you uh, have to substitute until you can get some better stones with sandpaper sharpening in the interim, you know, you start off with like a, a rougher carborundum or, or something of that nature and then do the rest of your steps with a little bit less expensive sandpaper while you're saving for the other stones. It's perfectly acceptable. Um, it's always acceptable to mix and match techniques. Just as long as you understand, you know, the basic concept and where you're going with each technique. Oh, <laughs> oh,